Grade 8 math number 1.1D, irrational numbers and how to estimate them. We talked before about square roots. It's a number that's multiplied to itself that makes a product. The square root of 25 is 5. See, 5 times 5 equals 25. It's multiplied to itself and it equals 25. The square root of 25 is 5. A principal square root is a non-negative square root. That's a way of saying a positive one. Because 25 is positive and so is 5, that's a principal square root. A perfect square is a square of a whole number. 25 is a whole number, so it makes a perfect square. A radicand is the number that's inside this radical symbol. That's called the radical symbol. The number inside is the radicand. An irrational number is a number that can't be expressed as a ratio of two integers. It can't be a fraction or a repeating or terminating decimal. They can't be written as the quotient of two integers. Okay? That's what irrational numbers are. So I'm going to talk about that some more. An irrational number can't be written as a fraction because as decimals, they never terminate. They never end. The number pi, that's the symbol for pi, starts with 3.14159265359, and it goes on and on. It never repeats or ends, and there's no pattern. And mathematicians in Japan have calculated pi to 1.24 trillion digits, and it still doesn't repeat or end. That's irrational. The square root of 2 is also irrational. If they don't have perfect squares, the numbers are irrational. So all square roots of national numbers, except perfect squares, are irrational. So take a look at these. The square root of 2, that's irrational. Square root of 3, that's irrational. The square root of 4, well, 2 times 2 is 4, so that one's okay. That's rational. Square root of 5, mm -mm. square root of 6, square root of 7, square root of 8. Not until we get to the square root of 9, which is 3 times 3, do we hit another rational number. So all these other ones, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, these are all irrational, the square root of all of these other ones. Okay? So to estimate the value of the irrational number, square root of 2, we find two consecutive perfect squares that 2 is in between. We complete the inequality by writing these perfect squares on each side of 2. So it's an inequality because it's got these less than signs, doesn't it? So we know 2 is going to be in between two other numbers, okay? So the square root of 1 is 1, because 1 times 1 is 1. And the square root of 4 is 2 times 2 is 4. So we know the square root of 2 is in between these two numbers, okay? So we take the square root of each number. 1 times 1 is 1, so that one's a 1. Then the square root of 2 is going to be in between there, right? And then the square root of 4 is 2. So we know the number, the square root of 2, is somewhere in between a 1 and a 2. It's somewhere in between a 1 and a 2. That's all we know. It's as simple as we can make it. So we try to find a number that equals 2 when it's multiplied to itself. What times what would equal 2 when multiplied to itself? Well, we can estimate the square root of 2 as approximately 1.5, but to find a better estimate for the square root of 2, we pick numbers that are between 1 and 2, and we try squaring them. So I tried 1.3. I multiplied 1.3 to 1.3, and I got 1.69. Well, that's not big enough, so that doesn't work. Then I tried 1.4. 1.4 times 1.4 came out to 1.96. That's pretty close. That's almost 2. I tried 1.5 and 1.5, multiplied them to themselves, and got 2.25. There should be a decimal point there. That was too big. So I know it's somewhere between 1.4 and 1.5. So I thought, okay, let's try to get this closer. So I tried 1.42. Well, that came out to 2.5. 0164. So that was too big. Because I wanted it to be 2, not 2.0164. And I tried 1.41 multiplied to 1.41 and I got 1.9881. So now I know it's in between 1.41 and 1.42. I got it pretty close. On a number line, it wouldn't be quite one and a half. It would just be right before one and a half. 
So it'd be about right there. That would be the square root of 2. So I still didn't quite pinpoint it. So really, it's an approximation, okay? Now, if you ever see the square root symbol on the top as of the numerator and on the denominator, it's the same thing as if it were over the whole thing. When you see this radical symbol on the numerator and the radical symbol on the denominator, just get the square root of 9, which is 3 times 3. So it's a 3. And 16, the square root of 16 would be 4, because of 4 times 4. So it would be 3 fourths. That's what that would equal. And it's also the same thing as if the radical sign was over the 9 sixteenths completely. It means the same thing, okay? So don't get worried when you see it on both the numerator and the denominator. It still means the same thing. Just find the square root of the numerator and the square root of the denominator, write it as a fraction, and you'll be fine, okay? So we're going to talk about classifying real numbers next, and I hope this was helpful. We're just starting this eighth grade year, and we should be finished with the entire eighth grade videos within a couple months. So good luck, and I hope you can follow along all right, and I'll see you next video. Bye.